Okay, I think this will be a good one. Uh, I really hadn't thought of doing this, but uh, someone brought it up in class. They wanted to see something like this. And I, I think actually it's a really good idea, so I probably should have thought of it myself. But anyway, what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to solve a um, 1D bar problem. One that you would typically do uh, in a mechanics and materials class, a sophomore level class, by using a mechanics and materials approach. But we're going to use uh, a partial differential equation approach to sort of illustrate the way a finite element code would go about solving such a problem as opposed to a mechanics and materials approach. Okay, so the problem I want to consider is kind of an interesting one. I like it because actually, the, in some sense, the PDE solution is arguably easier than the mechanics and materials approach. So let's look at this one. So we have a bar that's clamped at both ends and then has a uniformly distributed load on it, an axial load. Maybe it's under its own weight. Okay, we could do something like that. Actually, let's imagine it's under its own weight. And then <clears throat> the value of this load is rho um, times the cross-sectional area. No, we'll just do rho, so, we're gonna have so it's rho g. Okay? So that's our body force. Okay? So actually, I probably should have drawn it for all intents and purposes. Going this way, so it's gravity. But you guys can figure that out. All right, the interesting thing about this is this is not exactly easy to figure out the stresses necessarily uh, because this is, for mechanics and materials approach, This is a statically indeterminate problem. So the way you solve for this, you know, if you look at the free body diagram, you got two reaction forces. Let's call this point A and point B. So we have a reaction at A, a reaction at B. You got a net force on here of rho g a l right and if you do sum of forces you're going to get r a plus r b um, equals minus rho g a l l is the length of the beam and it has a cross-sectional area of a so it's a as a stiffness e and a length l okay so you can't uniquely solve for r a and r b and the way you get this is you have to get that the totally, you use the statically indeterminate case that the total elongation has to be zero because it's clamped here. So <clears throat> the total elongation has to go to zero. Okay? So, and since it's a distributed force, you need to go in and figure out that the, the strain field is what it's going to be. It's going to be a linear strain field. Right? And so we want to get the total elongation is the integral from 0 to L of the strain. The strain is the stress divided by Young's modulus, which is equal to the internal force over the area times the length. And if we draw a free body diagram, it's kind of, we have to pick one side. We can do something like this at a general point x. All right. We've got the reaction at A. And then we've got the internal force P. And then we've got the total net force and the body force, which is going to be rho g a times this length x. 
And so that tells me that P is going to be equal to minus RA minus rho G A X. And so from that, I can get that the strain is going to be minus RA minus rho G A X P over A E. And I guess I could simplify this a little bit. I can get minus R A over A E minus rho G. All right. And I dropped an X. Where did the X go? I have an X here and X there. Okay. So now I can integrate that and I can get the total elongation. It's the integral from 0 to L of the strain field minus RA over AE minus rho GX dx, and I guess technically I should have dummy limits of integration here. Oh, that's okay. It's not an L. Okay, and if we perform this integral, it has to go to zero. The total elongation has to go to zero because it's fixed on both ends. And this will give me minus Ra on Ae x minus rho g on 2x squared evaluated at 0 and L, that is delta, and that has to go to 0. That's the displacement condition. All right, and this will give me <clears throat> minus RA on AE minus rho G on 2 times L. I divide it through by L in here. Has to equal 0, and from that, I can get RA. This gives me that Ra is equal to minus Ae on 2 rho g l. All right? Now I have one reaction force. I can use that into equilibrium. Where's equilibrium? And now I can get that Rb is equal to minus rho g a l. Why do I got an e? I've got an extra e something around somewhere. Shouldn't that e have dropped out? Yeah, this this I'm sorry. There's no E here. So, oops, excuse me. Ah, uh, let me just answer that phone. Okay, sorry about that. So where did I screw up? I have an extra E in here, so, um, there should be an E on here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I have an E on here. There's an E on here. There's an E on here. And then this E goes away. That gets canceled out, right? So that E goes away. The units seem right. Okay. So this is actually the reaction force. And that has units of force. That's good. Here's the reaction of B from this equilibrium is this minus RA, or that's going to be, and you can see this value here is 1 half, so that's going to give me a minus Let me do this carefully. I'm always bad with signs. Minus rho g a l minus a minus this. So that's plus rho g a l on 2. And so that gives me a plus 1 half, a negative 1 half rho g a l. So this problem actually looks like this. So we have reaction forces, these are both negative, and I guess that should have been kind of obvious. Half goes here, this is rho g a l on 2, and this is rho g a l on 2, correct? Okay, 
and then we have the distributive force here. The total elongation is zero. Uh, I know that the stress at the point is this P over A, so the stress is P of X on A. P of X we got from here, that's minus RA. <clears throat> So that is minus RA is rho GLA on 2 minus rho GAX over A. So the stress at a point is going to be um, minus one half rho g. Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's going to be rho g l on two minus x. So that's the stress. And then the last one we can get the strain. We actually get another piece of paper for this. We can then get the strain. That's the stress over Young's modulus. So that gives me rho g on e, l on 2 minus x. Then finally, if I wanted to get the displacement, the displacement at some point x. That equals the integral of the strain, but now we're going to use a dummy integration. So we're going to go from, we'll use uh, chi. So we'll go from chi from 0 to, to chi equals to x. The strain in terms of the dummy variable chi, d chi. And so that gives me integral from 0 to x of rho g on e. L on 2 minus chi d chi, and that gives me now rho g e L on 2 chi minus rho g e chi squared on 2. That's a chi. Right? Evaluated at 0 to x. At 0, this goes to 0, so this just gives me rho g on 2e l minus x squared. And so that's the displacement field. All right? So it's kind of good. It's not... Uh, it's one that you can solve uh, coming out of sophomore mechanics materials, but it's not the easiest one in the world that you ever tackle because it, it is a statically indeterminate problem. So you have to deal with it in a little different approach. You have to use this causality term that the total elongation is zero. So you have to use that to supplement the sum of forces to give you two equations to solve the two reaction unknowns. Then you go back and you get the internal forces. Then we get the strains. And then you integrate the stresses. So that's the mechanics and materials approach. We get internal forces. From the internal forces we get the internal stresses, P on A, MC over I. From the internal stresses if we choose we can use Hooke's Law to get the, the strain, usually from something like Hooke's Law. And then finally we can integrate the strain field and get the displacement field. So that's the mechanics and materials approach. It goes in that order. Okay. Um, let me stop now and pause. Uh, maybe I'll make I'll make two videos. So I'll stop here. Now I'm going to solve the same problem, but using the partial differential equations, and show you how actually final kind of goes the other way, or if you do the PDE approach, you're going actually in the other direction. So this is mechanics and materials goes this way. I actually will show that the P 
PDE approach, which is really kind of the same approach that the finite element method or finite element analysis use goes in the other direction. First, you start with the displacement, get the strain, stresses, and then the forces. Okay? Usually, we actually don't even get that. All right.